Hey everybody, this is Marshall. Welcome back to Rough Spirits Collections, where the reviews are a little rough, but the spirits are always great. So today I'm actually going to be working on a project here for the Austin Rum Society's Don Q Cocktail Competition. This is going to be a couple of short videos that I think I'm going to try to piece together to make one longer kind of medium format video here. Just kind of explaining how I would go about doing things and kind of what my ideas are. Uh, first and foremost, I did want to start out with a 151 proof. I feel like some of my better cocktails that I've made at home definitely start out with a higher proof alcohol. Usually a 69% alcohol by volume, um, kind of like the Plantation uh, OFTD. So with this one here, I really wanted to try to start out high so that way I can always work myself down and, and dilute as much as need be and kind of adjust as I see fit. So I'm actually going to crack this one open here. Brand new bottle. I've never had the Don Q 151 before. So I kind of want to just try this one out and see what this is like, see what kind of flavor profile it has and kind of go from there. So on the nose, oh, it's just pure alcohol on the nose. I can't smell anything yet. <laughs> That's not too surprising at 151. Let's see. Oh, there's a grassy note on this one. I can smell a bit of molasses, some light grassy floral notes. That is a very pleasant nose. Okay. Oh, that is a caramely, absolutely amazing front palate. That's very hot. High proof really comes in strong. But this melds into the back end with this very musty, musty caramel not banana but maybe like a mango like a like an overripe pear or maybe even some sort of mango kind of thing in the back it's a whole lot going on and it is very high proof so i've definitely got to take my time with this one here but this being here with the initial impressions my thought is limit the the fruits and limit the actual sugars try to balance that 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 musty kind of back end maybe with something else that's not so hot, something readily available to try to stay within the standards of the competition I have. Now, I will say, I do think Don Q is a good product. I do think this 151 so far on first example, I think is a pretty good one. <coughs> not going to lie, that's a hot one. Okay. I think I know the direction I'm going to go. I'm definitely going to try to tone it back on the fruit. I'm definitely not going to put anything mango related in there. I think I'm going to try to keep it fairly dry. I'm going to tinker around with this one. I'll be back whenever I have an, uh, another development or something interesting happens here. Be playing with a few things. I'll catch you back here in a little bit. Okay. So after doing a little bit of playing around with a few different liqueurs and then making some simple syrups and then trying those out to see what kind of sweetness can balance out that overwhelming punch of that Don Q 151. What I've actually discovered is that the Don Q partners very well with the Velvet Falernum. Now that right there was a little bit kind of too sweet and also at the same time a little too hot. It didn't really make sense. So I diluted that, that, that mixture of these two with a little bit of the Barbon Court 8, which I think is a very good cocktail mixer. Now, that right there was a pure honey bomb. That's all I got out of it was just this honey note, which does actually exist a little bit in the, the middle to back palette of the Don Q151. So what I decided to do was to take a one-on-one -on -one mixture that I had of a simple syrup that I steeped with some cinnamon sticks, and I actually used that to kind of give a little bit more of a cinnamon honey characteristic to the concoction that I already had. And that was really good. It was a very, it was, it had a, a very cinnamon honey butter vibe to it. I decided to go from there on and add four dashes of the Angostura bitters to it to be able to give a nice little bite there to the back end. And I think that paid off very well. Honestly, this together has become a cocktail that I'm probably going to be making on a fairly regular basis. This one here is what I'm going to call the Hill Country Honey. 
because this has a very hill country Texas kind of vibe to it. it has a little bit of that spice, a little bit of that sweetness. It's very familiar to a lot of mom and pop shops and 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 you know honey butters and different things like that that I get out here in, in my local area. This one here is a very good cocktail. I don't know if it's going to make the cut for my entry into the Austin Rum Society's Don Q cocktail competition, but I will definitely be making this for some friends when they come over because I think they would actually really enjoy this, especially those people who I know that aren't necessarily into rum. I bet this would be a very good cocktail for them because it, the, the, the overwhelming punch of the 151 gets hidden very well inside of all those different sweet and spicy notes. I'm going to keep working on this one here, and I'll come back later on if I come across something pretty cool. Thanks for watching. I'll catch up with y'all later.